Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, I'm going to show you how to do a bare metal recovery using the Synology Active Backup for Business software, which is included free of charge with your Synology NAS. This is actually a really cool piece of kit. You can, of course, buy separate solutions from people like Acronis and various others, which will allow you to do recoveries, but I think the thing that I like the most about the Synology one is you're using the Active Backup for Business anyway, well, at least hopefully you are, and that means that if you do have any major catastrophes with your system, or you just lose some files, or your PC is unable to boot, perhaps your SSD has failed and you just want to recover your entire system, this is a really easy way of doing it. And also, all you really need is a USB flash drive. Now, the USB flash drive can be as small as one gigabyte, doesn't take up a great deal of room. Downloading the software to actually get it started and create your boot up disk, is a little bit of a tedious task, which I wish they could make a little bit more streamlined, but they've tried to make it as kind of comprehensive as possible and open it up to all kinds of solutions. So whether you're a small home office person, whether you're a major international with thousands and thousands of computers and all that kind of stuff, yeah, there's basically a way that you can use this software. So anyway, let's head over to the computer and we'll take a closer look and I'll guide you through the process. So let's get things started. We'll head over to the Synology website and just go to support section, and then you wanna to go to the download center. Choose your NAS from the list. So just type it in, DS420 Plus is the one that I'm currently using. And we'll choose that one there. Next, go to desktop utilities, and scroll down until you find the Synology Active Backup for Business Recovery Media Creator. Now, of course, like I've said already, this is assuming that you're already using Active Backup for Business. You've got it set up on your NAS and you're doing either daily or periodic snapshots of your system. So this is just basically an additional add-on. So click on the download link and choose the version for your particular system. So it doesn't matter what you do here. You can create this on a Mac. You can create it on a Windows desktop PC or a Linux box. The choice is entirely up to you. It doesn't make a difference for this bit regardless of what operating system is actually on the failed computer. So let's click on the Windows Download Zip, and we'll save this just to our Windows desktop. And once that's done, we can close this window. So now we can unzip the download. We'll extract it to the same location. And now we need to click on the Launch Creator EXE. Accept the user account control, and we'll start in the wizard. So you've got the choice here. You can either make an ISO, so you can burn it to a CD or a DVD, or you can use USB media. So we're gonna use USB media. So let's go ahead and plug this in. It does say there, insert a USB drive with at least one gig of memory. So there is our USB drive inserted. So now we can click on create and you'll have to download the Windows ADK if you haven't got it already. And just choose the default options. And you can choose whether it collects insights or not. I'm gonna say no, choice is yours. And accept the license agreements. This section here, you can leave exactly as it is and click on install. And now this is gonna download the actual software from Microsoft and do everything it needs to in the background. So just be patient and let it do its thing. When that's done, click on close. So now we go back to this screen, get ready to restore your devices, we'll click on create. And again, now it's gonna to want to download the Windows PE add-on. So we'll click on download that. And again, accept the defaults. And accept the license agreement and then click on install. Again, this is gonna download the features from Microsoft directly. Just be patient and let it do its thing. And when that's done, click on close. So now we can finally click on create. And it'll say here that the USB drive is about to be formatted, so it's gonna basically erase the entirety, so make sure that it's one that you don't mind that happening to. When you're ready, click on confirm. And now it's going to go ahead and copy across all of the required files onto the USB flash drive media or alternatively create an ISO. 
And when it's done, it will have copied over all the files and it says there your recovery media is ready. So when you're happy, click on finish and you'll see that the drive now has the Sino media on it and a whole bunch of files. So that is excellent. So we can close this down now, close this window. We don't need that anymore. So now what we can do is head over to the PC which has failed or the one you wish to recover and we can go through the actual recovery process. So I'm gonna reboot the computer and we'll take a closer look. Now to boot from the drive, you'll need to find out which key or what selection of keys you need on your motherboard to go into your boot menu. For this motherboard, it's an MSI one, so we just need to mash the F11 key. So we'll do that whilst the PC is starting up. Yours may be different. Check your owner's manual and you'll find out what key you need to press. There we go, so we've got our boot menu, so we'll choose our Kingston Data Traveler drive. And the Windows PE environment will start loading. So it gives you a warning there saying recovery may fail if the necessary drivers are missing. Potentially, depending on your motherboard and your configuration, you may need to get some drivers for the actual network adapters, things like that, or possibly the SATA or NVMe controllers or SCSI controllers if you're using those. Potentially what you could do as well to make life easier is to actually just buy yourself a cheap Amazon Basics one gigabit Ethernet adapter to USB. Those generally work every single time. Although I have found recently the Active Backup for Business has been updated recently to incorporate most modern 2.5 gigabit Ethernet adapters. So when you're happy, click on Next. And now you're going to need to know the information about your Synology NAS. So stick in your IP address and then use the admin or one of the admin accounts to log into your NAS, so username and password. Now you may find because you're on a local network that the SSL certificate is not gonna be trusted. Um, don't worry too much about that, just click on proceed anyway. If you're using two-factor authentication, which really you should be, um, it will ask you for the six-digit verification code from your Authenticator app. So once you've logged in, it'll give you a list of all of the PCs which you're backing up on your NAS. Your list may be substantially bigger than mine or maybe smaller, depending on your setup. So work out which PC it is. So, so for this one, it's gonna be our stream PC, which runs the mic daily backup. And it's an entire device backup that we've got here. And we've got our restore points, etc. So we're gonna choose this one and click on next. Then we get some options, whether you want to try restoring the entire device or the whole disk. You can choose the system restore volume only. So if your PC just won't boot up for some reason, you could try just the system restore volume or you can do it all manually. I'm gonna recover the entire disk, so I'm gonna leave it set to the top one. So now it's gonna try and retrieve the various tasks on the NAS. So depending on your backup solution, you may have multiple entries. And if there's one from a specific date where you think, ah, actually, yeah, I last saw the file I needed or it last worked on a certain date, you can choose whichever one is appropriate. Now, today is the 30th of April, 2025, and there was a snapshot taken this morning, a little bit earlier. So I'm gonna use that one as that's the latest one. And it'll give you some information about the disk and sizes, etc. You can also see automatically disk mapping. So if you're using a larger drive, then it will automatically remap the sectors and the partitions. So I'm happy with this one, so I'm gonna click on next. And again, it's gonna give you an idea of what is gonna happen. Talk about the partitions, which are gonna be restored. So all of them are highlighted in this kind of greeny teal color. So we're basically recovering the entire system. When you're happy, click on next. And it says there, once the restoration begins, it is irreversible. The volumes, the disk layout, and LVM settings will be replaced by that of the restored version. So when you're happy, click on okay. And now it's basically gonna start the recovery task. So it can take a little while, depending on your network configuration and also the speed of your network. So if you're using a 2.5 gig switch and 2.5 gig ethernet, it should take around about half the time that you would from a gigabit. Again, depending on your network connectivity, this may take a long time or it may happen very, very quickly. Let it carry on, do its thing, go away, have a cup of tea or something, have a sandwich, do some vacuuming, I don't know, whatever you do. And uh, we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so after a significant time later, it does say at the bottom there, this device has been successfully recovered. 
excellent stuff. So now we can click on finish and we've got this message saying the device has been restored successfully. Please remove the recovery media from the device. So that's our USB drive. So unplug that and restart or turn off the device to proceed. So let's just restart and see what happens. Are you sure you want to reboot? Hell yeah. So there we go, the PC has all booted up and it's basically exactly the same as it was when it was done. So excellent stuff, we've got a full recovery going on there. Yes, it has taken a little bit of time, but that is due to the speed of the network. Obviously, if you've got faster drives or faster network, then that time will decrease significantly. Now, in fairness, this is about 1.3 terabytes of data, so it's a sizable installation with games and all that kind of stuff. Chances are going to be that if you are in a business environment or just a regular user, chances are your Windows installation is going to be significantly smaller. So anyway, there you go. That's been how to use the Synology Active Backup for Business Recovery Tool Wizard and also how to create the USB media drive. I think this is a fantastic bit of kit. I really do like this. It's just a shame that Synology do make some odd decisions with their upcoming products, but we can talk about that in another video. Anyway, hopefully this video has been useful. If it has, smash the like button. If you want to see more content like this on a daily basis, maybe consider hitting subscribe and also the chime notification. That way you'll be notified of future video releases. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. Hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.